I think the best thing is to get a job that has an overview. You know, if you get buried in a corporation, you can't see anything. Look up Hollywood Insider in the dictionary and you might just see a picture of our guest. Peter Bart is the editor-in-chief of Variety, the Bible of the entertainment industry. As a studio executive in the 70s, Bart was responsible for such films as The Godfathers Part 1 and 2, Rosemary's Baby, and Harold and Maude. He's co-host and co-producer of AMC's Sunday Morning Shootout. Peter Bart, welcome to Dog and Pony. Oh, thank you. Well, we're going to start out, to warm us up, we're going to do a little segment called Once Around the Track. And that's where I ask you a series of questions in 30 seconds, and you answer as quickly and as honestly as you dare. Let's go. Where did you grow up? Actually, on Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. What did you want to be when you were a kid? A journalist. What's the worst name you've ever been called by an agent or an actor? Unprintable and unspeakable. What's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, I have to say The Godfather after your introduction. And what's the best restaurant in Los Angeles? The best restaurant in Los Angeles is yet to be discovered because the really good ones are too noisy and the service sucks. All right. You've been once around the track. Is the glitz and glamour of Hollywood a distraction to running a business? No, not at all to me. For one thing, it isn't really that glitzy and that glamorous. Right. You know, I mean, Hollywood is all about very bottom line people who have payrolls to meet and have boards of directors who look at their numbers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's the same as any other community. It used to be more about glitz and more about drugs. But today, <laughs> it's very corporate right. and very buttoned up. R Variety is a really good, interesting business. It's 102 yeah. years old. So, I, I like to wallow in the sense of tradition and also keep innovating. Mm -hmm. So if you're a 22-year-old coming out of school looking to get into the entertainment business, what, what advice would you give that person, a young person that wants a career in entertainment? I think the best thing is to get a job that has an overview. You know, if you get buried in a corporation, you can't see anything really. Right. So that's why it's great to be an assistant to an agent. You have to be... Uh, you used to getting beat up if you were going to be assistant <laughs> to an agent. Right. So it's humiliating, but it's a great way to get a perspective. I think being an, an intern at Variety is a great way of getting an overview because you, you get a sense of the business as a whole. Mm -hmm. But listen, any startup job is a study in humiliation, <laughs> and people should be prepared for that. Right. They should love it. So why do you still do Why do you show up at the office every day? Because it's changing so fast. It's exciting. I mean, yeah. whether it's a Variety or the movie industry, um, it, it's reinventing itself every week. And to me, that's an adventure. So as a kid in New York, you wanted to grow up and be a journalist. Can you take us on a, a nickel tour of your career to tell us how you went from young aspiring reporter to <laughs> Hollywood mogul? First place, if, if you're uh, growing up a Manhattan brat, and you say you want to be a, a newspaper man, that's actually considered respectable in New York. You know, in Los Angeles, people want to know what development deal you've got, you know, <laughs> and you're doing a, uh, a treatment and a rewrite. Right. But, you know, I, it's really, I said, I want ultimately to work for the New York Times. And, um, and I did. Having that as your goal, why did you... Why, why were you distracted by Hollywood when you had the opportunity to work where you wanted to work? Well, it's a good question. You know, I, 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 I love my, my career in journalism at that point mm -hmm. because I, I was actually with the Wall Street Journal and then the New York Times. But an opportunity came my way. And, you know, in, in the late 60s, Hollywood was a mess. There wasn't enough money. And basically all the, the, the old farts who were making movies had been laid off. And so, you know, there was this amazing opportunity to, to start at Paramount and actually make decisions. Like in my second week, uh, you know, I said, I liked a project. And they said, so what does that mean? So I said, well, I mean, I like the project. They said, but that's not germane. Does that mean you're going to buy the project tomorrow morning? And, and what, what offers are you making to actors and directors? I'm not interested in whether you like it. And I realized, oh, Christ. This is action central. So I, 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 I didn't want to ask this question, but I have to now since you started. How did you know when you saw The Godfather that it was great and Coppola was the guy to make it? Well, I, I thought the novel, which was not finished yet, it was a very, very well-written, interesting novel that Mario Puzo had mm -hmm. written. And it just struck me as being a, a potentially an excellent piece of film material. Mm -hmm. Coppola was... Uh, now, this is two versions of the story. It's Francis Coppola's, <laughs> who is full of shit when it comes to this subject, and mine. Francis claims that I went to him because 
he was the only Italian Italian person I know. Right. And I liked his spaghetti. <laughs> uh, in point of fact, you know, he had written Pat, uh, Patton. He had directed a couple of movies that were pretty good. Right. And he was a brilliant young um, emerging filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And I didn't give a damn whether he was Italian or not. But he's got this fixation. You know, Francis Coppola, like most of the directors of that epoch, loved to put down anybody connected with being a suit. Mm -hmm. So I was the suit, which I was, and he was the filmmaker. And has that changed in Hollywood? Entourage has that very scenario today. Absolutely. No, there's still this, this atmosphere of mutual contempt. Mm -hmm. It's usually deserved. All right, Peter, next we have a segment called None of Your Business, during which I ask you slightly impolite questions to which you can either answer or tell me none of your business. Got it. Who's the biggest asshole in Hollywood? That requires not any thought but meditation. <laughs> <laughs> They're just too many people. Uh, when was the last time you were starstruck? This dates me. Yes. I, I once found myself at dinner with Fred Astaire, who can't even cut a steak without looking so graceful that you sort of are embarrassed to try to emulate him. So I, I admit I was starstruck. What was your biggest tab at Spago ever? I don't really ever pick up the tab at Spago. <laughs> I don't want to give Wolfgang that much satisfaction. <laughs> what is the most extravagant thing you've ever bought? I once paid a um, couple of million dollars to employ a movie star in a picture I produced. And to write a check for one mil is really quite a lot of risk control. You feel like Dr. Strangelove. Right. And What's Rupert Murdoch really like? He's cranky. <laughs> you know, he actually, the amazing thing about Rupert is he treats his executives, his employees, very well. He's really a gifted manager. But he's cranky. He wants, when he decides to make a deal, he wants the goddamn deal done. And Apparently. He, has, he does not like frustration. Right. That's great. Peter Bard, editor of Variety, thanks very much for joining us on Dog and Pony. Is there anything you'd like to plug before we're done? No, thank you. I'll think of something on the way out, though. <laughs> we can always come back. We'd yeah. love to have you. <laughs> okay. As always, if you have any comments or questions, or if you can think of uh, guests for future episodes, please email me at paul at dogandpony.tv. Thanks for stopping by. See ya. Dog and